What is the story behind the end of humanity in I Am Legend? I Am Legend builds a world plagued with infected humanoids known as Dark Seekers, which makes life for survivors all but impossible. Since the spread of the virus, humanity as we know it has crumbled and only a few scattered survivor colonies remain. But what exactly was the virus that wiped out the human race? Where did it come from? And more importantly, what makes it so much different from other zombie-esque viruses from across fiction? Well, today, my friends, let's discuss the origin and terrifying attributes of the Crippen virus from I Am Legend. The Crippen virus was named aptly for Dr. Alice Crippen, which was adapted as a variant for the measles virus. In Dr. Crippen's research, she believed that she may have been able to use measles in order to combat cancerous cells and might actually be able to cure cancer. Known simply as KV, the virus began human trials and initial tests seemed very promising. Cancer symptoms in the patients tested with the virus were dampened, and for a while, there weren't ill side effects associated with the variant at all. Eventually, nearing the end of 2009, the virus began to manifest rabies-like symptoms in its patients, causing increased aggression and lowered cognitive functions. In December of 2009, the disease broke containment and officially began spreading uncontrollably across the world. Eventually, the disease mutated even further and became much more aggressive as a new strain developed, a new strain of measles that had a 90% mortality rate amongst infected victims. When it became airborne, there was nothing anyone could do to stop it from going worldwide. Ground Zero was in Manhattan, and within weeks, 5.4 billion people were dead. Of the survivors, around 12 million were naturally immune to KV, and the other 588 million were mutated into vicious dark seekers. What's interesting about the dark seekers is that they're much different from a common zombie. They're not mindless and have been shown crafting elaborate traps and plans in order to fight off the rest of the remaining humans, who they view as a large threat themselves. Not only do they maintain much of their higher intelligence, but they're also capable of empathy and have a wide emotional range, almost as wide as uninfected humans. This is on prominent display in the original ending of the 2007 film, and in the book as well that it was based off of. In the film, we watch as Dr. Neville, played by Will Smith, continually conducts experiments on one of the dark seekers that he has captured, and the rest are depicted as mindless savages. He does this with the hope of finding a cure, but as it is revealed in the novel later, the dark seekers don't see it this way. In fact, their entire mission is to save their friend from the heinous evil of this scientist. This is the origin of the very title, I Am Legend. As Dr. Neville realizes that he is the ghost story that the Dark Seekers tell their children at night, and the ghost to stay away from. Not only are they capable of empathy and care, but fear as well. They are simply the next stage of human evolution, and in their mind, they have been persecuted and hunted by this ruthless butcher, a butcher who seeks only to murder the entirety of their species. The original ending of the film reflects this revelation before it was ultimately changed into the cut where Neville sacrificed himself in order to take out as many Dark Seekers as possible before he succumbs to the infection himself. Just within the past two years though, talks of an I Am Legend sequel have shed some more light onto this ending, and it appears as though this current draft will be abandoned with the theatrical ending discarded and going with the original ending of the book. The project, however, is currently in a sort of development limbo, especially given Will Smith's conduct at the 2002 Oscars. But back to what the infection actually does in the book and in the film. The KV virus has a fair share of drawbacks for those who become dark seekers. The virus heightens all of their physical attributes, including blood circulation, body temperature, and metabolism. This is why dark seekers are constantly hyperventilating. They breathe so heavily because their lungs aren't designed to circulate as much oxygen as they need. This virus also causes extreme sensitivity to ultraviolet radiation, which is why the dark seekers are named as such. They are unable to stay in direct sunlight for more than a few seconds without enduring severe burns, and because of this, they have needed to adapt to nocturnal lifestyles. Dark seekers patrol the streets after the sun goes down, and they leave the daylight to the remaining survivors of the infection. 
but anyone caught outside after the sun eventually sets will almost certainly be hunted by the fury of the dark seekers. Over many years, this has resulted in albinism and extreme pupil dilation, which allows the dark seekers to see extremely well in the dark. In addition to this heightened sense of sight, their adrenal glands are also on overdrive. Their amped endurance and strength makes them far superior to any normal person in a one-on-one -on -one altercation, as they have achieved superhuman strength, and anyone who can't make it inside for nightfall will be savagely ripped apart. This enhanced strength, however, is offset by their damaged mental capacity. As we mentioned earlier, they are capable of empathy, emotion, and strategy, but they are not nearly as mentally capable as a regular human. The mental degradation makes them much more primal than regular humans, though they can still communicate with one another rather effectively. The virus itself, however, can be broken down into two main strains, the airborne strain and the contact strain, which is passed between bodily fluids. Once a human is infected, they have roughly 48 hours before they succumb completely, and again, most of whom die. If they do not die though, their minds begin to slip and their thoughts begin to fade into muddled conglomerates of what they once were. This is in addition to severe bleeding from the eyes, extreme fever, and vomiting of blood, making their last two days on Earth, and time as a conscious human, a living hell. Once the transformation is complete, they will be welcomed by other Dark Seekers, and they will unite under the same common goal, to survive the oppression and attempted genocide by the human race. The contact strain in particular is extremely volatile and seems to affect dogs far more rapidly than it does humans. If a dog is bitten, they too can become a dark seeker, but their transformation will take place in just a matter of hours. Before the day is out, their mind will devolve into a savage survival-based initiative. They are, however, naturally immune to the airborne strain and can only be infected through bites, scratches, and other contaminants. This virus brings about a very compelling moral and philosophical argument through its story. If the virus doesn't kill and actually allows dark seekers to retain feelings of emotion and connection between each other, are the humans justified in killing the dark seekers in any other way than self-defense? Or is this just the natural evolution of the human race into something different? Do you think there is ever a world where the remaining humans and dark seekers can coexist peacefully without having to harm or destroy one another to survive? Will this be explored in future sequels? And are the dark seekers even capable of peaceful resolution? What is the end goal for this transformed world? Be sure to let us know your thoughts down below, as we'd love to hear your take on this captivating problem. But that, my friends, is the story and effects of the terrifying Crippen virus from I Am Legend. Thank you for visiting the channel today, and I hope that you're having a great one.